welcome to those forking fangirls where we talk all things nerdy book tv movies pop culture fandoms and how they integrate into our adult lives this is episode three i'm christine and i'm natasha and today we're going to be talking about meeting our faves meeting our celeb idols meeting celebs in general people we watch on the internet just meeting people we admire and how that's Mm. went for us and our best advice about when that you meet your faves and the the kind of the bad experiences we've had because of certain things and the great experiences we've had and like you know that sort of that sort of uh, discussion is what we're going to be discussing today. It's a very anxious. I just got uh, anxious moment. just trying to explain it. <laughs> like, just all the memories are flooding just you. Flooding. <laughs> I'm just thinking about them, and I'm like, I can't even think of words. Just trying to explain what we're going to talk about. Basically, celebrity encounters. Celebrity encounters <laughs> are fangirl IRL experiences when we were fangirling and how that went. And uh, yeah, kind of some do's, don'ts, advices. Advices? You know. Yeah. I know words usually. But before we get into our big main discussion about meeting our faves, people we admire from the interwebs or the movies or TV, we're going to get into our Snap Crackle pop culture news. (laughs) And the first item we have on the agenda today is one I put in here. Lin-Manuel Miranda has been cast as Hermes in the Percy Jackson and the Olympians TV show on Disney+. Plus. I was very excited to see that he's in the show. Honestly, it's been so long since I read the first book. I'm mm. like, how much of a role does Hermes play? But I'm sure everything will be kind of expanded in the TV show. Poseidon is Percy Jackson's dad, right? Am I... Well, yeah, okay, Hermes is one of the, is Luke's dad, is one of the lead characters in the okay. Percy Jackson and the Olympians series father. So now that I think about it, maybe he does play a bigger role. I know he gives a gift. I don't want to say anything for people who haven't read it. Yeah, no, no, don't say it. <laughs> but, but, but I love that he's involved. Does it make you want to watch it more? I definitely wanted to watch it from the beginning. Now that it's on Disney Plus, I think it's going to be in good hands. And um, I mean, I'm excited for Lin Manuel Miranda. I want to see some like ladies cast. We we've only gotten male god casting so far. We haven't have we haven't seen a lot of ladies. Yeah. Well, honestly, I don't like many of the female gods. Uh, you know what? Is Athena? Y- Athena's there. Yeah. I mean, they're all kind of dicks at all of the gods. Um, so <laughs> that's their role. <laughs> uh, yes. So I don't know why I said that. I'm just thinking of one in particular that I really don't like. <laughs> and I won't go into it right now. Okay. Well, uh, we want to take us through our next next item here. Yeah. So Chris Evans was named Sexiest Man Alive of 2022. The yes. People Magazine's People 2022 Magazine. Sexiest Man Alive. Did you look forward to this every year as a child? I did. We, got, we had a People Magazine subscription, and I it was like too. so exciting <laughs> to see who was going to be Sexiest Man Alive. I think it's so funny though because I learned that you basically have to like campaign yourself. For people, you do yes, and you have to agree to it. You, you you like you don't just get like they can't just pick um like Chris Hemsworth and then he d- he's already been sexist man alive and then he can't like not agree to it. Like he, you have to like be campaigning for it and usually you have to consent. Yeah, and usually it goes along with something that like you want like and you want like publicity over because I heard that. Um, the people, this Sexiest Man Alive is coming out a little bit early to, to coincide with the election because Chris's whole thing, his um, uh, like po- politics thing, is um, voting is sexy. So he's like, yeah. I'm oh, I saw a little alive. sketch of that with The Rock. Did you did you watch that? I sent you the video on TikTok of that sketch with The Rock and Chris. Did you see it? That's for a movie. You didn't That's see it? Movie. I thought that no, was for no, a no, movie. No, 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 no. No, Maybe no, 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 no. He it was him. They were. He was talking about how he just he's been named sexiest man alive, 
and he says it like it's great to hear that i'm sexy from a former sexiest man alive and the rock's like hmm what do you mean former <laughs> i still have the title <laughs> It's a fun little sketch. I don't know what it was on. Uh, maybe Colbert or something. I don't know. And I think he's on a late night show. Anyway, it was cute. And I said it to you on TikTok. And you haven't watched that. <laughs> um, sorry. You've been anyway, more active there lately. Okay. <laughs> I know because I was sick. I had food poisoning these past few days. It has uh. been terrible. But I did watch more movies than usual and do more TikTok. I literally did a little message on Instagram and I was like, hey, I'm going off to get fully submerged in my book and I deleted all my social apps and then I got really, really sick and had nothing to do but lay on the bed with my phone and I had to re-download everything. No. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a rough three days. Um, anyway, here. Chris <laughs> Evans is our sexiest man alive. We love Chris Evans. So yes. I'm I'm happy with that choice. Okay, so Marvel News Audrey Plaza was cast in Agatha Harkness Coven of Chaos. And um it's been said that she's been cast as a villain. I feel like you have to explain Agatha Harkness Coven of Chaos because okay. I already forgot who Agatha Harkness is. Okay. I mean I I was her for Halloween, so I guess that why is she stuck in my head? Okay, so so Agatha Harkness was the villain in um, uh, WandaVision, um, which was the first Disney Plus Marvel um, like mini t like television series. Agatha was put in a certain situation where um, where she will definitely be coming back. She's getting her own Disney Plus television series, which is called Agatha Harkness. Coven of Chaos. I don't know if we're going to see um, what's happening in her life now or or maybe more of like a prequel type of series to WandaVision. Everyone mm -hmm. who has been talking about this, by the way, were like, oh my gosh, Audrey and um, Elizabeth Olsen are going to be like reuniting again on screen. And there's actually been no official word that Elizabeth Olsen will be um, yeah. on the Isn't Agatha it? Harkness show. You know so what perfect like, before I lose this train of thought? Um, Elizabeth mm -hmm. Olsen doing It's Me. Hi, I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me as Wanda. <laughs> as Wanda. Yes. Like, perfect. Yeah, and, um, perfect. Oh, yeah, anyway, I don't think I had no, I don't know. I had no expectation that she'd be in the show at all. I thought yeah, that same. for sure it would just be Agatha. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm excited yeah. for that. That's probably one of my most anticipated um, Marvel shows coming out hmm. next year. And last on our news today, Taylor Swift. <laughs> today in Taylor Swift, <laughs> Taylor Swift has dropped some remixes of Antihero with the Bleachers and I think a second one called like the Roosevelt. I didn't listen to the Roosevelt remix, but there's two remixes, I believe. I don't like remixes. Every time I see a remix pop up, I get really disappointed because I think it's going to be a new song and then it's just a remix. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I feel like this drop of the remixes is strategizing to keep Antihero on the Billboard Top 100 because it's been on, I think, for number one for three weeks now something mm -hmm. um and you know she's a smarty and she's dropping it now when it needs another boost if it wants to stay up there i thought it was really interesting and i always find this really interesting i don't understand why taylor when she features male artists they get their own uh they get their own verse my verse in the song mm -hmm. and they get to sing in the song and mm -hmm. then with lana del rey <laughs> We didn't hear her at all. Mm -hmm. The only woman I think who's gotten a verse in her song is Phoebe Bridges yep. in the on um, the red red Taylor's version. Yeah, uh, nothing new. And yeah, it's very weird. I don't know if it's because Taylor's kind of. I know she's probably a control freak. I could feel that from her. <laughs> like mm -hmm. she and I maybe it's because it's a female voice and she feels like uh, like it, that's what she's bringing and. She doesn't want her words to be mixed up, but I don't understand. I, I don't understand why. I just don't get it. Then why have them on it? You know, you got to give them a verse. You got to give them some stuff to sing. Yeah, I remember when I first heard "Snow on the Beach." I was like, "Where's Lana?" 
I don't. I like. I was. I was hoping she would have a verse. I love her vocals so much. I, I kind of expected that Lana wouldn't be in it because of her history with having people on who don't actually get in the song. Even when Haim are on, it's very, very little yeah. Haim that you can hear. So, I my expectation when she has a feature, unless it's a male artist, it always ends up being very, very little singing. So, sadness. I hope um, she stops featuring people unless she's going to give them a verse. <laughs> yeah, same. All right. So, we're going to move on to our next segment this week. But before we do that, we want to give a thanks to our new patrons from this week. So, we have Sydney, a very, very hibiscus. <laughs> Um, I think she's concealing her identity. Um, <laughs> Caitlin, Erica, Sophie, Sailor, Phoebe. And thank you to Camille, Rachel, Dana, G, Amber, Alexis, Andrea, Otto, and Leandra. Again, it means so much to us that you joined our Patreon community. Thank you for supporting us and the show. We couldn't do it without y'all. And it, it just means so much. And you don't have to be a patron to support the show. We want to stress, like, your support listening means so much as well. And if you want to help us out, you can tell a friend about the show that you think would love the show too. You can rate and review the show on whatever you're listening to the show on, whatever app, Spotify, Apple, anything. It makes a huge difference. If you're watching on YouTube slash listening on YouTube, hitting the like button just makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So any of that, thank you so much. Um, we're very appreciative. If you don't know about Patreon, it is a place where you can support creators in exchange for different perks. And we have a big perk called fangirl tea time it's an extra half an hour show that you get um if you subscribe to one of our either team edward or team polis bananas oh my god polis bananas i i keep forgetting i want to say tasha polis <laughs> Sense. My whole name. Toshopolis. <laughs> That's Toshopolis with an accent. <laughs> um, but if you subscribe to either of those two tiers, you get our extra show where we talk about more personal stuff. And uh, there's lots of other perks up there too. So check that out. There's a link in our show notes. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's move on to what, what right, right now? now? <laughs> what right now? Natasha, what books are you into right now? What are you reading this week? Um, okay, so I started the fourth book of Ice Planet Barbarians. <laughs> um. <laughs> I cannot take this seriously. Every time you say it, I'm like, what? Ice Planet Barbarians? Basically, it's like, okay, it's popular because of book talk. I started reading it back in January. I'm on the fourth book now. They, they're like, they're like really fast reads. Um, it's basically like if Avatar was like a spicy book. <laughs> you mean the James Cameron Avatar? Yes, I mean the James Cameron Avatar. Oh my God. <laughs> we gotta clarify. Um, anyways, each, uh, it, it's, it's about, um, how these ladies were, um, uh, it, captured on earth by these other type of aliens and then they crash landed on the blue planet the ice blue planet and then these like blue aliens um are sheltering them and keeping them alive because obviously, obviously they can't get back home and each book is about like a different couple anyways it is um interesting yes it's alien love um but i love it it's just trash and it's great um <laughs> <laughs> and then i also started um a very uh, a merry little meet cute which is by julie murphy and oh yeah i've heard of that one yeah and um sierra simone <laughs> so this is um julie murphy's first adult romance novel um oh i didn't realize it was adult cool yeah. it's spicy <laughs> <laughs> good yeah good good what about you what are um, you reading i have gotten I'm slowly getting back into Crescent City 2, which is Sky of House and Breath. Everyone constantly, I still get DMs all the time being like, where is your book talk for Sky of House and Breath? And they can't believe I have not finished it. But it takes a lot of energy for me to read a Sarah J. Mass book because I know I'm going to book talk it. So mm -hmm. I think 
I do a lot of thinking. I do a lot of note taking. I have to be on. Yeah. And I'm trying to ease back into it. I'm at the 40% mark. That's where I stopped reading. <laughs> and I'm easing back in because I can feel that just reading Akatar, I and seeing your reaction to me talking about Akatar, I'm now like theorizing different things that I was kind of theorizing before. And now I'm like, oh, God damn it. I'm just going to be spoiled just by seeing Natasha react to me talking about things. <laughs> I can just feel it. I can feel it. So, uh, y'all, please don't spoil me. I'm going to try to get that done before, like, the holidays. Or, it, you know, honestly, I'll probably finish during the holidays. We'll see. Good. Um, um, but I just – oh, you want to say something oh, about that? I'm just – I uh, I finished it last January, <laughs> and I feel a little bit like – I'm not gonna say that. I can't say that. But I'm I'm really trying no, hard. Don't not, say anything. I'm trying hard not don't to say not to react to anything at all that you say, and it's really hard. Um, I so you know, I, it just points me in the direction of that. Like I'm good at theorizing. <laughs> I feel like I and I don't I don't like being confirmed without knowing which way it is. Anyway, not gonna talk about it anymore. Done with that. Uh, and. If you don't know, we're rereading Akatar on this podcast. So we did chapters one and two last week. This week we're talking chapters three and four at the end of the show, the very end. So if you haven't read Akatar, you can definitely catch up because chapter three and four are very, very <laughs> beginning. Yes. Um, but if you have already read it, then you don't need to catch up at all. And so I just finished one last stop by, Ka- by Casey McQuiston. Mm-hmm. She wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue. And I really love Red, White, and Royal Blue. One last stop was very different. I enjoyed it. I didn't like it as much as Red, White, and Royal Blue, though. It was very fun, and it was cute, and I liked it. But toward the end, maybe it was because I was listening to the end through my food poisoning. I was just- I was just like, this end is going on for a long time. But I think it might have been the food poisoning. <laughs> um, but it was cute. I I really enjoyed it. And um, it's about... You tell me, you have to tell me how it ends. She already told me half the book. And I want to know I how it ends. I told her a lot about it. Yeah. It's about a... Um, how do I explain? I guess it's not a spoil. It's okay. It's just it's about a young woman who meets a woman on the subway, and she has a huge crush on her. And so every time she rides the subway, they talk. And she's on the same train as her, and she's on the same train on the way home. So they see each other every day, practically. And she really likes her. And eventually, she asks her out, and she was like, she can't she tells her she can't go and it starts getting like weird because she's always on the same train as her she's like what's going on like why are we always-? and she's always wearing the same thing and weird it starts being like what's happening here like does she never leave the train <laughs> um, and yeah i really love their relationship i love their dynamic it's really fun but yeah there's a mystery going on and our lead character she really loves um detective work so she takes her on as a case like what's happening with her and it's a fun time hmm um moving on to movies this week i watch so many movies compared to my zero movies per week usually same <laughs> since bellamy <laughs> since bellamy i don't go to the movie theater because he has separation anxiety and i can't leave him here without a babysitter <laughs> um so i only watch movies once they come on streaming i've been doing that a lot too usually I, we've been going and then i realized that um well i guess this is a movie but wakanda forever comes out this weekend and i i can't even believe it i can't so believe fast. it because well, i've literally avoided every single trailer this is the first marvel movie me too where, where i haven't seen a trailer and um because you did that for spider-man and i'm like oh i should have done that and then i haven't even had to try though i feel like they're not promoting it as much <laughs> that's true like we I really, yeah, I haven't seen a, a, a lot of it. Um, they haven't even been, been promoting it, like, on TikTok. Usually they have, like, a whole, like, front page TikTok ad. Whatever. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I have a lot of movies this time, too. So there's two movies that just came onto streaming that I, Alex and I watched this weekend. Um, so we watched mm-hmm. Barbarian, um, which is on what HBO What the heck's Max. Barbarian? Um, What's Barbarian? <laughs> I only knew about this. All this barbarian stuff you're into this week. I know. 
<laughs> okay, sorry. What was it? What is it? Okay, Barbarian is a um, horror film. Um, it came out oh. uh, like September, August, September. I just know about it because a bunch of my creator friends went to like this event for it. Um, but it's um, uh, about uh, this woman who um, rents um, this Airbnb in the slums of Detroit, and this guy is they also he's also renting it. He also booked it at the same time as her, and the guy is. Um, What's his face? Who plays Pennywise on in on it? He's a scars. He's a scars guard. One of the brother. scars guards. One of the mm-hmm. scars guards. Yes. Um. Uh. So, it, it, funny enough, it has the same plot as a Cat Graham, um, Netflix romance movie, but it's a horror film. <laughs> Are you talking about the Villa movie? Yes, I'm talking about the Villa. <laughs> okay, but. <laughs> The beginning of it has has the, the plot of the Cat Grant movie, and then it like it twists and turns, and you you really you, you can't you can't predict this one. And I actually really enjoyed it. It was a it was a, a bit freaky. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. It wasn't as smart as I hoped it would be, but it was still very enjoyable. So I would have I give it hmm. like uh I give it like a C plus. Maybe maybe How much maybe a B minus. We've started we've started a ten scale here. So eight. I thought we were doing letters. Yeah, seven point. That's what I do on stories. I eight, but we've been I've been asking you out of ten here. Did you say seventy five? Seven point okay. five. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, do you remember Dave the Barbarian on Disney Channel? No. Was that Disney Channel? Bar- bar- barbarian dave the barbarian the I cartoon f- I f- it rings a bell but i it's not i don't have a picture in my mind i was weirdly obsessed with it in eighth grade and for my ceramics project i made a cookie jar that was shaped like dave the barbarian and you take its head off and like it's I need so google ugly this. but how did you just google it because i can barely remember it but you've uh you've really triggered my memory saying the word barbarian <laughs> i keep thinking the theme song from dave the barbarian oh <laughs> Oh, this guy. Do you? Yeah, I yeah. It's really blurry on my thing, but oh. yes, Dave the Barbarian. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Natasha and I. So I text Natasha <laughs> last night that I'm watching. Don't worry, darling, because it's on HBO Max. Yes. And she's like, text me back a picture that she's also watching it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm 53 minutes in, and she's like, No shit. I'm 53 minutes in, so we were basically watching it together. We had no idea either, because I, and that, oh, that was so weird. That was so weird, especially with how weird that fucking movie was. (laughs) (sighs) It was a strange film. So I, with all of the people insulting Don't Worry Darling, I was still very optimistic that I would like it because I love Booksmart. Yes. And I, I, it's one of my favorite films. So seeing everyone putting this down, I'm like, oh, you're just getting down on it because of all this drama and all this stuff happening in the press about it. But actually, as I watched it, I started to agree with a lot of people. <laughs> Me too. Like, yeah. One being that Florence Pugh was out acting Harry Styles to like millionth degree. Uh huh. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, as much as I wanted it to pan out in a smart, clever way, I feel like there were so many plot holes mm-hmm. and it didn't have a, a complete arc. Like, the movie ended too soon to be satisfying. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, there was a lot of things that Natasha and I were going back and forth like, yeah, and what is this? What even was this? Or like, well, what happened to this? Or like, oh, what, what was this about? It didn't even, uh, so it was, a, it was a little bit disappointing. I feel like it was trying really hard to be creepy and then it didn't have a payoff that and, actually worked. Yeah, it, it just, I feel like the, the script was trash. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the script wasn't, completely vetted like someone could have vet if you gave me that script i would have been like i need to know what happens here and here and here or else this doesn't make any sense and it's not fulfilling um because like it wanted sorry it wanted to be like an m night Shyamalan movie but it wasn't 
It oh, it wasn't. Um, it it wanted to have a even like a lost sort of feel, but mm-hmm. we don't care enough about the characters. We don't get a full enough arc for anybody to have that feel. Like you start to get it, and then it doesn't complete the arc. You need you need another act after the end. You need another mm-hmm. twenty minutes. And I think that would have made all the difference for me, honestly, if there was another 20 minutes. Um, But sadness. (laughs) There wasn't. I'm going to give it like a 6 out of 10. I think it was directed, honestly, beautifully. I think the problems Mm -hmm. lay in the script. Um, That's where the foundation of the story is. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, And we both watched Enola Holmes this weekend as well. What did you think about that one? Do you want to talk about that one? Since I just went on a rage about Don't Worry Darling. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I loved it. I I still am trying to figure out if Me I too. liked the first or second one better because Same. I, can't, I, can't, I can't decide. I can't there's remember so much, enough to decide. There's so much Henry Cavill in this one and like I adored him acting drunk with that was probably my favorite scene was her like walking up the steps with him <laughs> oh it was so good and then i um, love the whole thing it was so fun well and like everything with, with like tewksbury and um oh it was so good is that the kid that's the kid yeah. is that hit her love interest mm-hmm. i loved it so much and then i just was like in tears at the end because i love like an inspiring end twist and i love that it was based on like semi-true events that happened yeah and i love helena bottom carter's character mm-hmm. in here and i love that she came back um i just it has a great cast and it's directed in a really fun way mm-hmm. it's got a really creative style and it really sticks the style like it it does it justice and i yeah. love that yeah um yeah, I'd give that one like a 9.5 out of 10. Same. I agree. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> and, oh, I watched My Mind and Me, the Selena Gomez doc. Oh, that's right. And I uh, I cried like the entire time I was watching this. <laughs> it was either because I was upset for her or I was happy for her or upset for her mm-hmm. or I was <laughs> It was just a constant cry, though. Mm. 45 minutes and I had to take a break. I was like, oh, my God. This is just, like, really gut-wrenching. And I need to take a second. Because I was just so emotional for Selena and her journey. Uh, it's definitely worth a watch if you like Selena Gomez or if you're interested in her at all. It's just, it's, it can be very heavy at times. Mm. So, um, so not a good plane that in mind. watch. Mm, probably not unless you want a good plain cry which i do enjoy no i'm good (laughs) no (laughs) No. (laughs) all right and lastly tv this week i did not really watch anything except love is you know what i watched love is blind and it had a finale and a lot of stuff i was like what (laughs) happened (laughs) i was not happy with the men on this show and i know i already talked about that but they are dumb and immature little boys Mm -hmm. on this show and they're trying to marry these women and um the women aren't perfect either obviously but nancy is perfect Mm -hmm. and i was very upset for nancy (laughs) and her stupid love interest he did a lot of (laughs) stupid things i feel maybe i'm being too judgy but i feel like he kept being really obnoxious no i'm not being too judgy he was like he said some very rude things to her about the way she looks and about like being interested in other people and their looks and i was just i can't i can't with him yikes yikes um yikes for sure i want to watch it i do hopefully soon but i um alex and i watched my twin brother and i watched andor um on disney plus which is a um, star wars um television series and we follow the character from rogue one um so not what was her name in that um felicia (laughs) no idea Felicity something. Um, the her the actress's character. That's the actress. Anyways, so Andor, we follow him, but like I wanna say th- three to five years before Rogue One takes place and pretty much like the his backstory. How okay, so first off, Alex and I watched they dropped the first three episodes the night it premiered. Alex and I watched the first two. 
the slowest piece of television I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, so we had dropped it because we were like, okay, we'll just wait until more episodes come out so we can, you know, maybe enjoy it more and we can get more of the story instead of just watching it, you know, little bit by little bit. And then um, I was seeing a lot more buzz on it on TikTok um, amongst my like creator friends. And so Alex and I um, watched it again. And it's so good. It's so good. You just have to get past like those first two episodes because it's a whole different storyline because you kind of have to like get into the action and follow his life. But it is exactly what I think um, so many of us like adult Star Wars fans are looking for. Um, it's a smart show. Um, it's it's um it's it has so many different emotions that I think both that don't necessarily belong within the films. Um, so a lot of like heartache and um, a lot of like suspense um, and um, and you're, it's not it's not always a feel good type of show, but it's definitely like a gritty piece of television where you're like you're not like fawning over Baby Yoda. Um, but it's a very mature piece of Star Wars content, and I think it's incredible, and everyone needs to watch it. Do you think I need to watch it? Um, I think you would like it. I, it, it it's slow, so just be aware. I, John was like, you need to watch Andor, and I'm like, I don't even i don't like star wars really and he's like no 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 you'll like it and i'm just like will i like uh, i i i like it because i love star wars but i feel like if you don't love star wars like you're not really gonna love it because there's not there's not like the cute thing like grogu who's keeping you in or like raylo it's just kind of like there's no romantic line keeping me in yeah it's just seeing how like regular people in the star wars world live instead of you know going on adventures and Hmm. you know being with galactic princesses and princes so it's not Mm -hmm. you know yeah all right interesting interesting i when you mentioned rogue one i was like oh no i don't have any memory of that movie it's like the worst star wars movie of all time for me i fell asleep a million times (laughs) the best part of rogue one is the very end it's the very end. It's the only part my eyes managed to stay open for. I kept being like, where are all the characters? <laughs> like, um, all right. All right. So let's move on to our big discussion today. Meeting our faves, meeting people we admire, and how that went. And I think we should start off with probably your most uncomfortable experience. And I think, Natasha, you should start us off. So I can gather myself and feel oh, less gosh. anxious about my story. <laughs> um, I'm trying to, okay, when I was putting this list together, I was like, I kind of want to talk about like new experiences that I've had. Um, no, but I, you I have to talk about the old ones first. <laughs> okay, my, my one of my very, very first celebrity encounters, which was a, honestly, a, a a terrible time in my childhood and I will never ever forget it. It was a core memory. I met How old were you? I think I was seven or eight. So Oh God. We were at Disney You're a baby. We were at Disneyland with my mom and my dad, Alex and I, and we were getting popcorn, like right in front of the castle. And I heard this voice and I was like, I know that voice. And um, as I look closer, it's, it's nighttime, so it's really hard to see. And there wasn't a lot of people going up to her, but it was Amanda Bynes. And, um, I, I told my mom, like, mom, it's Amanda <gasps> Bynes. Yes. And it, it was like right at the peak of like Amanda show. Like, of Amanda, please. Yes. yes. And I oh think, my God. I was such a big Amanda Bynes fan at that time. Me too. I Amanda, was, please. <laughs> I was huge, a Penelope Taint. <laughs> huge fan. Like, we had just watched My Big Fat Liar, I think, um, like, earlier. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. With Frankie Muniz. Uh-huh. And um, I was, like, that. Th- this was my first celebrity encounter. So I, I had never seen anyone <laughs> who I really cared about. And, like, imagine, like, Amanda Bynes during this time. And I told I don't my... I know what I would have done. I told my mom, I'm like, mom, that's Amanda Bynes over there. And then um, 
my mom was really good. My mom was like me, how I am now, where she um, was like just the easiest. She had met so many celebrities because she worked in L.A. for years. And um, she went up to her and she goes, hi, Amanda. Um, these are my children, Alex and Natasha. And she like shoved us forward. And like we were like, you know, little at that point. <laughs> and she's like, we just wanted to say like how much we adore you. And then Amanda with like her voice, she goes, oh, thank you. And I can't do it, but <laughs> that was a good impression. <laughs> and uh, I just remember like smiling at her. I can't. And then my mom's, and then my mom goes, and we loved you in Liar Liar. And I remember hearing. Oh, <laughs> I remember, oh no. I remember hearing that and being like, mom, no, my, my big fat, like, like in my head, it was like, mom, it was big fat liar. And then Amanda goes, oh, thank you. Um, I, I think you mean big fat liar. And she goes, oh, yes, yes. One of the liar, li one of the liar movies, you know. <laughs> and then I just like, stop. <laughs> Back up, Christine. You're, you're embarrassing me, mom. <laughs> oh, oh. It was burned into my memory. Did you get a picture? No. Did you get what? a picture? No. It was oh, like, no. We didn't have cameras. Because there's like, no camera phones. Mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, it was like, this was like nine, this, mm, 2003. 1999? 2000? Okay. No, because, well, my Big Fat Liar must have come out in like 2003 or four, or maybe it was two. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like before all of that. I Alex and I didn't get cell phones until 2006, so, and they didn't have cameras on. Um, yeah, nope. no. <laughs> So, yeah, we met Amanda Bynes at the popcorn stand on Main Street of Disneyland. All right. I mean, it was – it could have been worse because you were really little. So mm -hmm. she could have just – you know, she probably was just like parents. You know, the kids knew who I was. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. many Amanda show memories coming rushing back. <laughs> Me and Olivia used to steal my dad's video camera and reenact different things, scenes from the Amanda show. Like, mm -hmm. Olivia would be Penelope Taint. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I love to be Penelope Tate. She would be Amanda on the bed where she reads the letters. I think it was all that. Dear Ashley, that's mm -hmm. me. Remember that segment? Yes, I do. Iconic. Iconic. Um, what about you? What's that? Yeah. I mean, I feel like as far as awkward encounters, yours really wasn't that awkward. I mean, it was embarrassing, but you were eight. So it was okay. Like, all, I did not meet a celebrity, Natasha, until I was at least in college because I grew up in New Jersey and no one comes there. <laughs> like, Alexander never. Hamilton did. <laughs> uh, okay, he was dead. <laughs> you but not a celebrity. You were close to founding New father. You were close to New York, though. Yeah, but New York had Broadway, and none of those were – you didn't know those people. Yes. I mean, at least as a, as growing up, I didn't know the people on Broadway. Now, of course, I know Lin-Manuel Miranda and everyone from Hamilton, but that didn't come till I was older. I did not know anybody. Sure. Um, so, so, I mean, the first people – honestly, the people that have been most embarrassing for me have been people that I really care about, and I feel like I know because of the internet. So it, they're not exactly like typical celebrities. They're like internet YouTube people that I really admire and I feel like I have a parasocial relationship with. Mm. And I feel like there's always this question that I think about now. Like, do I want to? You imagine having like meeting them and that you'd be friends. But there's this part of me that's like, would I rather just admire them and have this parasocial relationship than actually meet them and blur that line in my head? Because sometimes it's yeah. great, but sometimes you're just like, I'd rather just be anonymously admiring them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to meet them like I love watching their lives from afar and it just made it weird for me because I was weird and now I feel like they're aware that I'm weird I that's that's like where my head goes so it depends how the interaction goes so one of my like most mortifying and it doesn't sound as I mean it was mortifying for me um experiences was when I met John Green and I've been watching the vlog brothers since the beginning of vlog brother time they're like my <laughs> earliest memories of youtube are watching the vlog brothers and and of course john is also an author and i i really love his books and 
all of that. And we were on the VidCon floor in maybe, I think it was 2017. And it was me and Jesse. <laughs> and um, John Green was brought by um rosiana who we know she was like oh do you want to meet john and we were like oh yeah that would be that'd be amazing we'd love to meet john and she brings out john <laughs> from like some area of the floor and he's like oh hi and we're like oh hi and we literally all three of us stood there staring at each other for the longest minute of my life why and no why? one said anything why christine you're really loud i couldn't back up back up i'm so sorry <laughs> but this is mortifying <laughs> have i not heard this story i think i have How i don't have remember you not heard it? i think i talked about it in one of my vidcon vlogs what do you mean Maybe we just 2015. stood there oh my god i literally forgot all words and john is not good at these things either i've heard his <laughs> stories about it uh about meeting all various other people and being mm -hmm weird or just not knowing what to say and jesse is very quiet and put the three of us together it's all on you it's all on you babe it was it was all on me and my brain went blank it just blacked out i was like hi oh no and then i kind of waited for anyone to say anything and nothing happened. And they were like, thanks, bye. <laughs> we didn't do anything. It was horrible. And like, I just, I I could have said, I don't know, I love the podcast. I'm like, I really love Paper Town, anything. Nothing came to mind. And then, I think it was before this that I met Hank Green. Mm. I've met Hank a bunch of times now. Um, like I, I think he's he's aware of me and he's commented on uh, my book talk of his of his book mm -hmm. and such and um <laughs> and when i met hank kat and i were covering the fault in our stars carpet red oh. carpet premiere in new york city yes yes and this also was not great it was not a great experience uh <laughs> like so we are on the edge of the red carpet and we're just trying to call people over to talk to them. No one comes over on this carpet except for Hank Green. And we're like, oh, yes, we know Hank. This is great. And he comes over and he like kind of vaguely recognizes us because he's probably aware of the booktube community. And um, the, we're just we ask him a couple quick questions and they're like, can we get a selfie? And uh, he's like, yeah, sure. And I turn my monopod around that has like a mic attached to it. And I whip it around. And the mic goes flying off and falls right next to his feet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. I was mortified. So I picked that up and then swing the thing around to take a really quick selfie. And it, I take the most awkward terrible selfie of all time mm -hmm. where it looks like i i don't know if you've seen it but i'm really close to the camera so like half my mouth is in it and it's a great picture of cat and hank and then there's me at the front of the camera lens and it looks like i was photoshopped in because the lighting is different and i look so ridiculous and that is my memory of meeting hank i don't think i asked him anything of of substance i don't remember what we said i remember complimenting his wife because she was there with her um, Catherine, and she looked really pretty that's all i remember about it i just block it out this is what happens with embarrassing situations uh i blocked them out so it took a lot to even remember any of these yeah i i i couldn't i can't really remember a lot of, of embarrassing celebrity encounters Honestly, I think most of them are with you. Um, <laughs> like the Hall and Roden situation. <laughs> oh, um, I can't. And, and like I, other times have been like, like Christine and I early on in our YouTube career, like we were asked to interview people on the red carpet. 
like as press and that is like the most um anxiety inducing situation because you're typically at the end of the press line and they're coming down the carpet they've already gotten their pictures they already talked to the major press outlets like you're getting like randos who are in the films um and then you're just having to like call people over and that's kind of what happened with holland i hate calling people over because you're so scary it's scary and it's also like so demeaning because you're just like come to me and uh, it's not a fun situation so i avoid that situation at all costs now not my favorite so as i say oh. all right so you were saying that you have never met so many celebrities as you have in the last year yes and my new rule is i only approach if their work has meant something to me in some way and i actually have something to say that is the only time you should be approaching celebrities and always and so i i feel like a good tip is do you before you go up to them have like three things in mind to say Mm -hmm. because i have gone up to people with something in mind to say (laughs) And then that one thing goes very quickly, and then you're just staring at each other. For example, I was at a party at FinCon, and there was Jenna Marbles. <laughs> I fucking love Jenna Marbles. Mm-hmm. She's one of, like, the first big YouTubers. And I miss her. she went to Boston University for her master's. And I went to Boston University, so I saw her and I was like, oh my god, I should go up to her and be like, oh hey, I want to be you too, my name's Christine, and we should, it'll start a conversation. And of course, I go up to her with a friend, and it's a friend from BU. Um, it, at the time, I was studying abroad for BU in California, so I was with some <laughs> of my BU people. And we went up to her together, and I was like, oh, hey, you went to BU, right? And she's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> oh, my God. It was, like, in a, like, a dancey uh, area, too, so it was really loud. And it was just kind of like head bob, head bob, head bob, head bob. And I was like, okay, cool, bye. <laughs> Like, you imagine that you're just going to start a conversation. But the fact of the matter is they don't know you. You're coming up out of the blue. So that might take them off guard. And you, like, really like them. Mm -hmm. So you might blank. So you need, like, three points of contact. And I find an easy thing to do is uh, compliment something uh, that you like. And then sometimes that'll, like, calm everybody down and break the ice. Like, when I met Sarah J. Mass, um, it was at a signing, and I, like, complimented her ring, and then she, like, complimented my face or something, and then we just, like, started talking. And she's – Sarah is the most easy person to talk to. I yeah. feel like we click so well, and it's so nice. It's so fun to talk to her. Um, but – yeah, in situations where you don't know, and I, you don't know if that's going to work. If Sarah was, like, a different personality mm-hmm. type, maybe it would have gone blank, and you wouldn't need to, like, start again. So, like, three things. Compliment, something you want to say, something else you want to say. Sometimes it's so hard to say that in in real life, though, because um, I went to the um, – oh, shoot, I wrote it down. Hold on, what was the premiere I went to? i just been to so many <laughs> – <laughs> calm down over there i know i know i know okay so i went to the gray man premiere um which was the movie that premiered this year with uh ryan gosling and chris evans and um uh i went with tessa and we didn't uh, walk the red carpet we just kind of went through um the side and then we went into the like uh, uh holding where you get your popcorn and stuff um and uh, we were just, like, kind of waiting in there to see, like, which friends were going to pop through. And I saw uh, Scott Evans um, come through the door. And this is Chris Evans' brother, okay? So he's also an actor. And, however, I've never really seen <laughs> anything Yeah, I wouldn't Bennett. know him if I saw him. 
But I, I did just, see him on like Jimmy Fallon with yes, Chris Evans. Or something. That's how I know him. It's like I I've seen him like on the late night shows. I loved you in that one interview, right? And 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 on Instagram, like when he pranks Chris, like it's hilarious. I love that stuff that he posts. And so I saw him. And usually when I see someone like that, uh, that like I'm like, oh, like I really, you know, they, like my heart like kind of stops for a second and then I turn to the person I'm with I'm like da, 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 da. and then and then they're like who and I'm like this person they're like this 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 and then um and then I'm like I think I need to say hi to them and then I, it takes me a minute I'm like okay this is the only time I can say hi and if I miss this chance and I'm not going to say hi to them because it's happened to me um earlier this year I was at the black phone premiere and Jamie Campbell Bauer walked right past me and I saw him and I was trying to think about like what to say to him and then he went on the carpet and I missed my chance and I will never forget that damn it um anyways I didn't miss my chance with Scott <laughs> and I go up to him and I say hi Scott I'm Natasha and I like shake his hand and um I go I just I really love you on Instagram oh oh into words in such a concise manner and it was just the afterwards i'm like i'm like yeah you and your brother are so funny and he's like oh thank you he's like yeah he's on the carpet right now i'm like cool and then i didn't realize it but he's gonna be in the upcoming barbie movie and i'm like fuck i could have said that to anyone yet because it's so embarrassing (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 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 well I just saved it for the pod (laughs) Um, I mean I've had a million um, embarrassing encounters but like it's not it's more what I don't say than what I do say (laughs) more of saying nothing like um I met Cassandra Clare the first time at a signing and it went great because she was like, oh my God, your videos. And like, it was the first time we had reenacted. Um, we had, <laughs> we had interacted and it was great. And it was only a 30 second interaction. So this is usually like a safe situation when you have expectations for a 30 second interaction. And I, I would say most of the time, if you manage your expectations for that, you have a great experience. Like, when we met Tom Holland, mm-hmm. it was the best night ever, mm-hmm. and it was so thrilling. Mm-hmm. And all he did was come over, say hi, and take a selfie. But it was like one of the best moments ever. I felt like I was just like floating, <laughs> <laughs> like I collapsed after. Um, and we had just expectations of nothing, yeah, or just like waving or seeing his face. And we got a picture with him, and his face was like this close. I'm sorry, an inch away from mine. You guys can't see. <laughs> But the selfie is, we are so thrilled. We're wearing masks, but our eyes are like, this is really? the best moment of our lives. <laughs> well, and he took, he took a, he took a beat and like, was like, hi, how are you guys doing? And yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was so nice. And that was so nice. And it was a beautiful moment. Yes. We met Spider-Man. We did. <laughs> um, and so if you have expectations like that, if you're not imagining yourselves being best friends after this one minute interaction or like after you have a chat with them, you have a much, much better experience. It's these expectations that you want to make a connection that makes it so it could go really bad. <laughs> like, 
That's why, like, <laughs> like I, I don't want to meet like my most favorite celebrities because I I feel like it would just mm-hmm. like I, I don't want to meet Henry Cavill. Like, I just want to see him from afar. You know, I I don't want to have that interaction yeah. because it might ruin the like fantasy that I have in my head of like, oh my gosh, you're an actor, I love you, and I I don't want it. No, 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 no. Like you don't need it. I don't yeah. need that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, let me see. Well, because they're all like, uh, they're all I've, real people, and it's hard to, yeah. to approach someone yeah. within such a short amount of time and have a meaningful yes. connection, unless that person's yes. also willing to have a meaningful co- a connection. But usually, they're meeting so many people at that point. It's hard. And it's really hard. And all you can really mm-hmm. do is say, hi, I love your work. Let's get a picture. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, that's what it, with these very famous people, that's the case. The thing is, when you're meeting internet people, a lot of the times, like, they want to meet you and talk to you, mm-hmm. but it, they're also meeting a lot of people. So if you don't come with something to say and they're not good at, you know, maybe they have social anxiety, you know, a lot of us on the internet do, it's hard and you want to make a meaningful connection and they do too, but like something just doesn't click and it doesn't happen. And that's where you get like these awkward moments. Like, I met Grace Helberg at Helbig. another party thing. Helbig. Oh, I'm so sorry. I never say her last name. <laughs> um, I met Grace, like Daily Grace, and I knew that she did UCB. And so, like, I had that one point of conversation that I was like, okay, I'm going to start a conversation with Grace. I'm going to say hi. And I went up to her and I was like, I said that and I literally, I blacked out. I have no idea what happened. I don't think we talked. I think I said that thing and moved on, but I just remember not knowing what to say next. And I, I literally don't remember. I remember <laughs> this is the night I drank the most in my life. I had two whiskeys and I remember feeling dizzy and being like, I hate this. I hate this. I don't drink. I hate drinking. I hate the way it makes me feel. And that's all I can remember from that night, like saying hi to Grace and it going poorly <laughs> and her being nice, but me not knowing what to say at all and those whiskeys. So the three points of communication, having them ready, I think that's a really good plan. And for people where you know that they will take the, be able to take the time to try to talk to you, to have those three things. I also meet, met D- Nina Dobrev. I was interviewing her for something. And, um, you know, I don't know if she was in a bad mood or if I was just super anxious, but I was ready with my Vampire Diaries love. I was like, hey loved you in vampire she's like oh really oh like that's really nice and it went blink really blink. <laughs> blink, I re- blink 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 i remember this and i was like oh that's sad <laughs> yeah honestly i mean she could have been really tired it could have been like her millionth interview you know you never yeah. know um i met robert sheehan because i was interviewing him and i got to tell him that i loved him in city of bones and he is so fun and so easy to talk to and i'm like so glad i got in that little city of bones snippet he was like oh really (laughs) i can't do his irish accent (laughs) like that's crazy that you know that and all that stuff and i was like oh my god i'm such a huge fan of the books Um, oh my gosh. So recently, um, <laughs> I was at the School of Good and Evil premiere and Tessa and like a group of us were like at the bottom of the carpet and, um, I, I got to see, uh, Lee Bardugo and, uh, Victoria Aveyard and Marie Lou and we were just like chatting and, um, kind of like waiting for people to like come by. So we, before we go into the theater and, um, we were, we looked over to the front of the theater and there's like this beautiful girl in this like big white like poofy dress and her hair is like up in this high pony with a braid and she's wearing sunglasses and opera gloves like she was a whole vibe and we made this whole story about her um as we were watching her because she was like getting on the floor taking pictures we're like oh yeah she's definitely an influencer like i want to see this content like i know it's gonna be good and um 
as we make our way up uh, into theater, she's like still like squatting in the corner um, with a guy that she's with and um, with her sunglasses on and everything. And then Tess and I make our way over. We're like, we just come at her with so much energy because we just had like the time of our lives making up this story. And we're like, we just have to tell you, like, you look so incredible. Like the poses you've been doing, like it's just been amazing. And like, we made a whole story about you down there and it was so fun watching you. And she was so sweet. And she goes, oh my gosh, thank you so, so much. And we just keep chatting, blah, blah, blah. And I go and ask her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to follow you on Instagram so I can see this content that you've been working hard at. And then she's like, she's like, yeah, just type in A-U-I-L and it should be the first one that comes up. And I look at my phone and it's Ali E. Cravalo who plays Moana. And I'm like looking back and forth <laughs> my phone to her. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, that's me. And I'm like, you're Moana. <laughs> And she goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, hi, I'm Ali. And um, and then Tessa, Tessa had a connection with her. We we didn't know who she was because she had sunglasses on. <laughs> and, um, Tessa has but also like Moana is a cartoon, so you are not true. used to seeing her face. That's true. And um, Tessa had a connection with her. Anyways, that was like a really great experience because she had just so much um positive energy, and she was so so sweet, and um. Uh, we just had a great time. I'm like, okay, we had to get a picture with you. We ended up taking like these sassy pictures. It was great. A great time. A plus experience. This is, that's, that was all recently too, like last month. So I love that. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it depends on the person and everyone's really a does. person is something you mm-hmm. always remember. And they've done a lot of stuff during their day and you have no idea what happened before you met them or talked to them or saw them they could have met like 50 bajillion people before you and they feel sick and they haven't eaten and all this stuff so yeah. um who do you the... think um who do you th- well anyway, go on i'll ask the question later i wanted to tell you ask you if you can walk me through this vincent rodriguez oh, uh, time because i think i blacked out during this you don't remember this <laughs> I I remember being like I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> this, this is because I is, don't want to be. We were at a party, so I didn't want to be like the fangirl at the party. Well, this is one of those situations where I was like, I'm like, because we had seen um uh, my. So these are the, the cast of Crazy Ex Girlfriend yes. was at Comic Con, and we love Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Love, and we had love. We were literally walking um like in front of hall h and um the uh scott michael foster um had been walking the opposite way and he plays nathaniel plimpton um from like season two Did we on chase after him i no, i literally i saw him and i'm like i think that was scott michael foster and i literally turn around and i'm like scott <laughs> scream his name but this was a good encounter because he was so excited to be okay. like recognized and um i don't remember that oh i i do because i felt so good about it afterwards <laughs> and and he's like he's like oh my he's i like, remember I, being there <laughs> he's like hi and i'm like oh my goodness we're such huge fans of crazy ex-girlfriend like we're gonna see the live show and he's like yeah we're actually gonna go um rehearse it right now and and we're like oh we don't want to keep you any any longer he's like no no that's okay and, and i'm like oh is it okay if we could like to get a picture so he was giving us like a lot of great energy because we, we got a picture we did we have a picture no yes no way yes i think wait we- send me that picture I have no memory of that. Okay. I was so embarrassed. I think I just can't call out to people. And I'm like, no. Afterwards, you're like, I'm glad you did that. (laughs) Yeah. I have no memory. I just blacked out. (laughs) So we are at this party that we got invited to. um, Oh, and it's usually it's usually just like a bunch of authors at this party. But apparently he knows authors and he was there. There was like some. um, Okay, not him, though. This is Josh Chan. This is Josh Chan. Vincent Rodriguez, the third. Yes. Mm -hmm. So So Josh Chan was just talking to people like feet away from us at this party. And Christine and I were like, all right, we need to go up and say hi to him. Like, we've already had this experience. No, but I didn't want to say hi, like, in a fangirl way. So I didn't want to, like, I wanted to, like, if we're going to say hi, I want to do, like, the friend connection thing. Lol. (laughs) And I was like, no, I think we should go and tell him how big of fans we are of the show. Because this is, like, at this time, I was, like, trying to test different theories of, like, how people would connect with us. And since, like, we had a good reaction from Scott, I was like, oh, maybe Vincent will be the same way. No. 
it was and we tried the thing is that we went up to him and we came at him uh, i came at him it was me because i was like oh my god yeah it was such, not me we're such huge fans of like crazy ex-girlfriend and we're in like this like really calm party setting by the way and um like, oh my gosh, we love you in the show, blah, blah, blah. And we're just like showering him with fangirl love. And I, I was just silent, I feel like. You were nodding along and oh. you were like very animated along with me. I do Yeah, this. because I, I was just like, this is not the path I wanted to take. This is not the path I wanted to take. Because we're going to be stuck in the room with him. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it wasn't well received. Um, I don't know if that I was... I mean, he was, he was nice. He I was, just, like, he moved on. Yeah. Because like, we he didn't want to have, like, a, a chat. It was more of just, like, thank you, okay, bye. And then I think we Well, started... I have a friend who's friends with him. So I also was going to be, like, I was going to say something like that, but it was too late after we fangirled. <laughs> well, I think we went up to him again, and I think you tried to bring in that connection. No. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I yeah, didn't. I think we did we not talk to him again. No, we didn't. We, we, were, no, we, didn't. we were in, no, like, we a group. No, we, didn't. we were in a group together. I think no, we, we were didn't. talking to him again. No, we didn't. Yes. No, we didn't. 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 We definitely talked to him twice. No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, so that was a very um, cringe The situation. thing to remember about all of this is that they have no memory of these things. Like, they meet too many people to ever remember these weird things. But it's just, like, me that haunts me. <laughs> oh, God. Um, before we move on to the next question I want to ask you, are there any other Twilight experiences you have to share? Because you met a lot of the Twilight actors, Natasha. Yeah, I know. Um, I've, yeah. I've met yeah. everyone from the Twilight cast multiple times, um, whether that be in a situation where we got to talk to them for a long time or it was on a red carpet and I'm screaming their name in their face. Um I have so many. The one that I wrote down, because I feel like I've never talked about this story before, was Peter Fancinelli was in Orange County for some reason. He was at this, like, festival. And at this point in time, like, any time these actors did an appearance that was remotely close to me, I was there. Like, there, <laughs> there was no ifs, ands, or buts. I was there. And he, um, <laughs> at the time, was... Um, uh, uh, he was partnered with Alex, Alex's lemonade stand. Um, and it was like a, a nonprofit, like cancer fund, fund foundation. And so he was doing an appearance, um, like a few cities over from me. And my friend at the time and I, we, uh, were shopping the day before and we saw these like, like little lemon soaps and we're like, oh, wouldn't that be cute? Like if we brought them to like the photo op and we took pictures with lemons because it's like for Alex's lemonade. And, um, oh, so, we, okay. so we get up there and like, we're, we're chatting and, and this point he kind of recognizes us because we've been to multiple things. Okay. <laughs> and. Um, and we're like, we're like, we're here, we have these lemons for you. Like, let's, let's take pictures together. And he's like, we take the picture and then we're just chatting afterwards. And then he goes to like bite it. And, um, he's like, oh, and we're like, oh, it's soap. <laughs> and, oh God. And so yeah. Yeah. So, um, we gave us a, a, a soapy lemon to Peter Facinelli who plays, um, Carlisle Cullen in Twilight, and um, he took a bite out of it. So that was but embarrassing. He, did he actually bite it? Yes, he did. Did he actually bite it? He did. He oh, he no. like chomped it and got like a, he got it like oh, on god. his teeth. Oh god! Yeah, it was like oh, god, on oh, his. God, oh, god. And he's all like, you missed that part. I thought he just went to take a bite of it. No, no, he no. He actually bit into it. He actually bit into the, the soapy lemon, and then the soap That's like disgusting. like stuck on his teeth, and we're trying to like play it off. It was bad bad mm. mm -hmm. yeah mm. yeah <laughs> um i that's one of those like i just be like mortified like never look at me again <laughs> like, i gave him so for eat. some reason we were fine afterwards and we went along <laughs> about, we, we like made a whole we we like joked about it we're like this is hilarious like that's well no. that's good that's the way you have to do it yeah um i'll never forget this other time <laughs> Is this about me? 
oh no what did i do <laughs> um, it was the first time we were hanging out obviously it was the vampire academy red carpet time and um dom from dom sherwood shadow hunters dom sherwood he already recognized me from my youtube videos that i'd made about the vampire academy movie and uh had said like said something and pointed at me while he was on stage doing the panel or something oh yes and so did zoe she was like oh yeah you're the girl oh my god yeah that's me and then we were at this party where they were at and we were like you saw dom (laughs) we were like should we go talk to him and to get his attention you're like hey i think you know my friend (laughs) pointed to me no Like he was being pulled away for a photo, <laughs> and it was like the most awkward ten seconds. <laughs> no, like, I was like, uh, I was shaking my head. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, that um, was what I used to do. I <laughs> I used to. So this was say, like 2014. At the beginning of 2014. Remember me. <laughs> This is because of Twilight. It's because Twilight, because pe- like those actors remembered me, and it, it, it ingrained in my head that every person I met remembered me. Bad idea. <laughs> I mean, to Dom's, um, I can't remember credit because now I'm all anxious. To Dom's credit, he always remembers me. Like every time I see him, he's like, "Oh, hey, like yeah. it's you again." I'm like, "Yeah, hi," because I've done a bunch of videos with him now. And um, it's always super nice, and it's always super nice for them to be like, oh, yeah, hi. And, like, Kat, it's always like, hey, Christine, and Emerot. Like, they're so cool. That was a great cast. Oh, God, I remember something. Um, <laughs> what? What? This is not about you, though. <laughs> okay. 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 So I went to the Teen Choice Awards. This is another Twilight story. Okay. I went to the Teen Choice Awards. <laughs> I was a seat filler, okay? I, I This is my second year doing this. I was, like, 16 years old. And I was with another, like, Twilight friend because all the Twilight cast was going to be there. This was night was, like, went down in infamy in my head. Like, everyone at school wanted to know about it, okay? And... <laughs> um, everyone at school wanted to know about it. <laughs> they wanted to know about it. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so they had placed me in this row... Um, and my favorite actor from Twilight was Kellen Lutz and he, um, and his like little brother had sat right in front of me. And at this point, oh, again, God. why did you know his little brother? Oh, I knew everything about Kellen. Not anymore, but I used to know everything about him. We, <laughs> he, he it, still know. I said, <laughs> you forgot it. Oh, I, well, the, the weird thing about Kellen is the weird connection I have is that one of my good friends this Kellen is her brother-in-law and they live in the same town over from me now and it's weird now so I have to like just block it all out of, out of my memory but okay besides that okay so I was 16 I think I had met Kellen like three or four times before this and um again making the assumption that he knows who I am He sat right in front of me and I like went to tap on his shoulder and I'm like, hi, Kellen, it's Natasha. And like he gets up and like, like he gives me a hug and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't remember me. And um, I sat behind him the entire time at that show and it was so hard. Like I I, I just, I don't, like what was he thinking? Like this weird, crazy fangirl who was like sitting behind me and like he introduced me to his little brother. Weird. Okay. And then at that at that point, um, the they had like brought in the Vampire Diaries cast. Taylor Swift was in front. Like, wow, this whole night was crazy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, my favorite part of this seat filler story, though, is the picture. It's the picture that afterwards. You posted. So I and we'll have to post this picture on Patreon. So yes. send it to me so I can post. I will. Because that night I had scoured the internet 
for like pictures from to see like because you're not allowed you're not allowed a camera or your phone and so like i had to go about telling a story and people like were like at school they're like no that didn't happen and then i found the picture and then the thing is in the picture i'm this little itty 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 bitty she's dot like, a dot <laughs> she's like that's me the main focus of the picture is ashley green selena gomez taylor swift in the right hand corner you can see Kellen Lutz in the corner and then behind him is me and I have arrows pointing specifically to me saying that's me and then the arrow pointing to Kellen Lutz saying that's Kellen and I posted it on Facebook I was like look world look where I was <laughs> that grain of sand is me you can tell you can tell it's me though you can you can. It was just like such a funny picture because you're like this tiny dot in the background. There's all these like arrows and stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but it is crazy that Taylor Swift is right in the front of the picture. I, I, I didn't care right about it. it. I literally didn't care about her. <laughs> I only cared about Kellen. That's crazy. Um. This is a good segment to the question that I want to pose to end this discussion because we're going long, but like we had a lot to say here. Um, Is there a celebrity or person you really admire of, you know, that has that you watch or listen to that you still want to meet? And how do you imagine that meeting going? Do you imagine it like a 30 second like, hi, I love your work, take a picture? Or do you still like have this fantasy of talking to them and like becoming friends? Because as much as I don't want to like set up these expectations of meeting Taylor Swift and becoming friends, I have dreams about meeting Taylor Swift and becoming friends literally all the time oh like i had a dream that i invited her and joe to thanksgiving and they came <laughs> to thanksgiving and like we didn't have something they liked to eat and i was like I'm mom i was like so upset that my mother needed to make something else for taylor and joe and i had a dream literally last night so i don't know if it's because i knew we were gonna be talking about this that i was thinking about it but i had a dream that i like had met taylor and we were like just staying in a hotel together going on some adventure like that's so fun i I know i have dreams like this all the Mm -hmm. time and we always just like become friends really quickly because it's my dream (laughs) like i had a dream once that i went to her concert and then like afterward we hung out i had a dream that she came to my high school and then like we hung out i have it all the time if i ever actually meet taylor i hope that i have the ability to speak I hope mm. that like it's a good interaction but any interaction literally so I savor this interaction that I had with her during the reputation tour where I was a speck of dust in the crowd and she came over us on one of those wires in a basket and she made quote eye contact <laughs> with me as she went over our heads and I felt so seen yes. by Taylor Swift I was like I started to cry. I was like, I just made eye contact with Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd still love – I want to meet Taylor Swift someday in my life. Mm, I do, too. I just – I hope, like, at some point we get picked to do, like, the VIP meet and greet. Like, how cool would that I be? Know. Like, I know. all of those, like, stories when I think 1989 was dropping and – um, like random fans would be picked to go to her house to listen to it like that is a dream scenario like just to like hang out with Taylor at her home like how cool yep would that be um oh my gosh Abby says um, she got the, the rep room ever <gasps> oh my god Abby oh my gosh. <laughs> I would die we have, well when we do a Taylor Swift episode maybe we have to have Abby on to talk to us yes um I don't I don't like I said earlier in the show, like oh Abby, I remember that. Oh Abby just said she told me at BookCon 2019, and I think you showed me a picture. I think I, she- right, you showed me a picture. Did you? Oh my gosh, she I did. remember this. Yes, yes. Um, I don't. Mm, I, even though on earlier show I said I like I don't want to meet Henry Cavill, like I still in my mind want to meet Henry Cavill. <laughs> And I just—it's hard to quell that dream. 
It is because I definitely for like logical reasons. He's definitely someone I still have dreams about. He's in a very committed relationship. When he was single, I was like, I'm so down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh gosh, I don't. I don't know who I would want to like. I feel like okay. This came to my mind. This is very random, but I would love to meet Bryce Dallas Howard because I've just been such a huge fan of her work <laughs> for so long, and she's so even as Victoria in Eclipse. Yes, no, but also like she was in The Village, um, which is an M Night Shyamalan movie, which is one of my favorite like horror films, and um, and now she's like a brilliant director. I I don't know. I I just I love following her on Instagram and um. I think she's just so Oh my god. What do you do you think when you meet here you'll be like, Bryce Dallas Howard, I love you on Instagram. No, I have so many things to talk to her about. <laughs> um, um well this has been really fun, but we have to wrap it up. Is there anything else you wanna wanna no. tag on the celebrity section? I, okay, are you uh, ready to move on to Yeah. I have what? a lot more stories, but that was just We can we might have to do another episode. Yeah. Because I have other stories too. Uh, but we definitely want to have all of our segments in the episode <laughs> and you have to get on a plane. I do. So we do have to move on to our Fork Mary Kill of the Week. Yay! Bump, 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 bump. Oh. I sung the wrong part. So this week I have a Marvel themed FML and the choices are Iron Man, Cap, or Star Lord. Who are you gonna fuck Mary Kill in this situation? It's FMK. It's not fuck my life. <laughs> oh, did I say FML? Yeah. <laughs> Different sentiments. Um, okay, so gosh iron man cap or star lord okay well i'm going <sighs> you love iron man so much for some reason i don't I love do. him as much <laughs> but i love him i love his storyline do i ha- have any sexual relations or like uh, or, or thoughts about him or if you may if you marry him <laughs> i'm gonna marry oh cap. you're just talking about in- i'm gonna marry cap <laughs> okay i'm gonna marry cap okay now i'm trying to figure out who do i kill um i know everyone hates chris pratt but i do love star lord oh i know i feel like uh, mm, uh, okay i'm just gonna marry i'm gonna marry iron man because that makes the most sense realistically <laughs> star lord i don't i'm not i'm not too crazy about sharing a ship with like multiple people and like traveling through space that sounds terrifying yeah. to me, so I'd rather not be hitched to that. So I'd rather be hitched okay. to Iron Man. Okay. Oh wait, 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 wait! Then I'm you're gonna wait, murder wait, Cap. Wait, wait. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm. I'm going. I'm. No, no, no. I'm. I'm murdering Star Lord. I'm marrying Captain America, and I'm kissing Iron Man. So my whole, okay, you just completely mixed up what you said. Before. I did. My whole argument does not make sense, but that's my decision. <laughs> Okay, so say it again. You're marrying Cap, you're kissing Iron Man, and you're murdering Star-Lord is what you're doing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to marry Iron Man, (laughs) Um, obviously. (laughs) I am going to um, kiss Star-Lord, and I'm going to murder Cap because he gets on my nerves. He's grown on me by the end, but, like, I really have fun with Iron Man and (laughs) Star-Lord. He's so hot. <laughs> They're all hot. That's true. They're all very attractive people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. So we're about to move into our Akatar section where we're rereading A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be talking about chapters three and four this week. Next week will be chapters five and six. We're going two chapters at a time. So it's really easy to hop on board to this segment. And after this, we'll be recording our fangirl tea time, which is our Patreon only um, segment where we, I have some, I have a mastermind story (laughs) to share today. Um, And Natasha has a a little, a story as well. Um, 
So we're excited to talk about that in our fangirl tea time section. Um, but right now we're about to move into Akatar, which we're loving. We are loving yes. getting back into the Sarah J. Mass world. So let's do it. Chapter chat. Okay, so chapters three and four. Let's start with obviously chapter three. <laughs> Natasha, you didn't put any notes in here, so I don't know. It's, it's, I, it's in my notes app. I just forgot to transfer them, so I'm, I have a lot All of right. notes this time. <laughs> Okay, well, next time I got transfer, so like I could be ready for your notes here, so we know what combines and what doesn't. Um, but we're so we're going into the town square to sell the pelts that in the last chapter Feyre murdered the wolf and the deer, and she's about to sell the wolf pelt, which is actually a fairy's um, skin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, on the way, the first thing that I noticed. Uh, was the children of the blessed we encounter so yeah. these are like high fey worshiper fanatics almost like a cult and it kind of i mean it hit me as strange that we as far as i remember we don't see them again and it, 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 there's a lot of setup in this chapter yeah. that feels like foreshadowing uh-huh. but then we don't really see any of it again mm-hmm. and there's a lot of exposition about the world that made me think about crescent city uh don't confirm or deny anything uh i'll go into it eventually though so what were what do you have any thoughts on these children of the blessed i feel like a lot of what they were saying was foreshadowing at least um so i have like um they said may the immortal light shine upon these sisters and i thought that was interesting because eventually Mm. well well i mean i don't know if anyone's not read yes yes I won't go into spoilers. Um, and then, um, um, <sighs> okay, and the, yeah, the children of the blessed were wearing um, silver bells. And I can't, mm-hmm. the Fae don't like iron. They don't like iron. I, I don't really remember anything about silver. Yeah. I mean, I, is that, was it supposed to call the Fae to them or something? I Did think Pharaoh so. I think. Kind of allude to. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, do yeah, we see like the silver them? later? I don't think it was a big point. So I'm like, okay, I don't think it was a big point. These children of the blessed don't have a lot of things um, right <laughs> um, about the Fae. Yeah, it's kind of like they don't know what they're worshiping, really. They're just kind of going off of myth and what they've heard from stories. Yeah. And everybody just kind of disregards them um but there's a lot of exposition there's a there's a sentence that says for millennia we were slaves to the high fey we built them temples to their feral gods and sprawling cities until the humans rebelled and it just all sounds very familiar to the plot of um oh my god (laughs) my phone's not on the right setting um it's all very reminiscent of the plot that we're seeing happen in Crescent City, which is different but similar because there are phase and there are sprawling cities and the humans are the lowest um, the lowest caste of society and they are, I think, used as slaves in a lot of situations mm-hmm. and they are rebelling. That's what's happening. So I don't know exactly how these connect, but it is a very similar underarching story that's happening there and it makes me think that you know if if that world is this world like millennia ago and if you know the other monsters and such have died off and the fae were like the over winning i don't know species in in whatever war goes down um because we do have these creatures of great power in Mm -hmm. the akatar series like Mm -hmm. amran and like the weaver and like the uh, monster that we see in the library that are so powerful and we don't really understand them but Mm -hmm. they have some they can speak like they have so 
It's interesting. It's all very interesting. And I don't want to be spoiled, so I don't want to like go into it deeply, but I couldn't help thinking about it. Um, so another point I wanted to talk about was this mercenary. Mm. That we get a lot of detail about this mercenary. And it makes us think that they're going to come back. And they never do. But she's like, somebody gave me money like this once when I needed it. Yeah. I, I, uh, my mind, I put down, I'm like, oh, this is Gwendolyn Christie for some reason. <laughs> like, this is her. It does feel like Gwendolyn I'm Christie. I'm like, she's just sitting there going to tell the story to Feyre. And I'm like, what is the point of this character aside from the fact of, like, giving her money and also, like, warning her of, like, like weird types of fae. Of Faye, like yeah. coming through the line um and coming through the wall the wall yeah and and then that kind of puts us on a path of education that there's just more there's more than one Faye. is like there's more different types of all different types of Faye. Mm-hmm. yeah and also i mean so just for if you don't remember this is the mercenary that buys the pelts from her and she overpays mm-hmm. and my thinking here was that she knew that that was a fae pelt as well that she didn't she she knew it wasn't just a regular wolf pelt Mm -hmm. and uh i don't know she it it sets it up like she comes back she's gonna come back around in some way and so it it got me thinking like is she a character from another universe that we that i'm just not putting together but like i racked my brain and no one really came to mind here so i don't know i was like is this bryce (laughs) doesn't make any sense um another point is uh isaac hale he seems to be like the catch of the town Mm -hmm. is the guy that favor is just like having a friend with friends with benefits relationship with he's the oldest son of the wealthiest farm family in the area all these characters just kind of dissipate very quickly i i forgot someone was like like isaac hale that literally is the same name of isaac in teen wolf (laughs) <laughs> oh my god really i hated that character yeah. but that's the same name um yeah i thought it was interesting also like towards the end of chapter four how wait is nesta gonna marry wait who's nesta marrying nesta's not gonna marry anybody but tomas is the person that tomas. she wanted to marry but he beats his dad beats his wife that's it okay i was getting those two mixed up but is isaac marrying somebody like that's what was talked about. Yes, in this. but we don't know who it is. Yeah, yeah. He he has a marriage being arranged for him, mm-hmm. and Feyre was like, "I'm not to the point where I'm going to ask him to still meet me. <laughs> I'm not that desperate." I also thought it was interesting, like the droughts that they take, the droughts, whatever they um like for um child. What am I saying? Oh yeah, the for, birth control, birth control, um, childproof. <laughs> The birth control, um, like, drinks that they make. Mm-hmm. That they Concoctions. Can, they can be taken by both men and women. I'm like, oh, how convenient. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, and, okay, uh, so in the next chapter, in chapter four is when Tamlin shows up in his big beast form and, like, knocks in the door and demands... He comes in just yelling about his dead friend, and he doesn't specify that his friend was in wolf form. And it's like, mm-hmm. how were they supposed to know? And also, I wanted Favor to be like, hey, we're starving to death, and he was about to eat the only food. And that is why I felt like I had to in order to live. Like, she didn't explain anything. It was him or her. Mm-hmm. And I wish she said something to that effect. I mean, what can you do when you have a big, gigantic beast? Which, by the way, when I think of Tamlin, I think of, like, the beast from Beauty and the Beast. But it's uh, it's it's more than that. Because he, he looks like a feline horse, which is what she said, <laughs> with a wolf face, elk-like horns, and then black claws and fangs. And I'm like... It's a very weird mashup of different animals it's terrifying <laughs> um, yeah i mean it's kind of beast like because the beast yeah. does have horns yeah it's true and he's and he has a lion-ish look mm-hmm. which is feline mm-hmm. um and then the wolf yeah. face which i guess is like the beast mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of yeah i picture like a more grotesque 
beast yeah that's like bigger and scarier because the beast is a cartoon when it comes down to it yeah. and i picture him cartoony <laughs> yeah um, um but her her father comes forward like limps on forward to try to come in between Feyre and the beast and um which i thought was like oh yay someone cares about Feyre. <laughs> But did he? He was almost like, go. I, I feel like... That's true. He didn't say much. He, like, started to say something. He was mm-hmm. like, my youngest. And then it was just, that was it. That was his attempt. And he was like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Well, Don't kill me. And, like, at that time, like, the, the, Farah's only concern was her family. Like, she still put herself in front of her family. Well, the others... Yeah, she had her knives. Yeah, well, they just, like, willingly cowered. And Nesta, like, protected Elaine and... Mm-hmm. she was She's... ready to fight like she had her knives and she mm-hmm. was like okay his neck looks like the best place for this to land mm-hmm. um but then she tries to throw it and he just like flicks it out of the air like a toothpick yeah what but... did you think when her father was like you're too good um and to never come back uh i like that he said that but i think in the moment it was i, I don't think i would understand it you know mm-hmm. i think he doesn't want her to have to live this life where she's doing everything for them and as long as she's there it seems like they're going to be taking advantage of it and he wants her to get out and do her own thing instead of living only for them which is what she's doing and like so I understand the sentiment with perspective but in the moment I would have been so hurt if my parents said that to me yeah oh for sure yeah yeah um, like don't come back go to Perinthia in this land that they've only heard is like full of murderous monsters mm-hmm. um i i think it's really interesting rereading this and p- picking it apart after we've like read the whole um series and and, and seeing mm-hmm. why things are falling into place um i like i like rereading it <laughs> yeah fun. yeah i thought it was really interesting that Feyre called she and Nesta two sides of the same coin Mm -hmm. and I I feel like it is the way that they are fiercely protective um and the way that they will fight for what they want they both have that instinct but they do it in two very different ways uh and it's just interesting to look at them like that because Nesta is so closed off and so cruel you don't get to really understand that part of her, but Feyre knows it's there because she's been around her for so long. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, yeah, and of course, like, we get to know Nesta a lot better in A Court of Silver Flames, and so we know that that's true, but it's It takes hard a while. To, it's hard. <laughs> We've talked about this. It takes a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it takes a while for her to open up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, then if we end the chapter with Tamlin taking Feyre and, uh, leaving, there's a loophole where he doesn't have to kill her if he takes her over to Perinthian and she lives on his land. Uh, what a loophole. Tamlin, <laughs> what a loophole. Tamlin autocorrected, kept autocorrected to tampon while I was typing my notes and I just found it hilarious. I was like, I want to call him tampon from now on. <laughs> Uh, yeah well nesta Um, kept autocorrecting to besta for me (laughs) apple has the worst autocorrect i've said it once say it again it's terrible (laughs) so bad (laughs) uh so that was chapters three and four of uh, akatar and next week we're doing five and six if you have any thoughts or feedback that you'd like us to discuss please feel free to email us at those forking fangirls at gmail.com mm-hmm. and this is gonna wrap up our show today but before we go we want to remind you to follow the podcast for free on your favorite podcast app you can follow us on instagram at those forking fangirls follow us on twitter at fork fangirls pod or I think we have TikTok, but nothing on it yet. Yeah. <laughs> At those forking fangirls. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and if you are watching this on YouTube, we have been alternating posting on either of our channels. I am YouTube.com slash Poland Bananas Books. And Natasha is YouTube.com slash Tashopolis. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Is there anything else we have to add? Did I get our wrap up? I think you did. A little bit? Yeah. I think I did. Um, and don't forget that we have Patreon perks if you want to check those out. Uh, Patreon.com slash those forking fangirls. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening to episode three. All right. Thank you so much for being here. We will see you next week. Bye.